Please welcome the legendary Louis Theroux. Legendary, I like that. Yeah. I like that. I would say you are legendary. If you say so, I won't disagree. There was... <laughs> we've had many guests on, but I've never had an audience, when I said your name, the noise that you made was extraordinary. I'm talking about... <gasps> but no... <laughs> but, but no whistles. I, uh, the, or was the whistle just... <laughs> <laughs> now it's complete. But they were... Uh, well, I wanted to ask you, how does it feel to be quite so adored? Because you are adored. Listen, I'll say this now. If you and Brian Cox had a mud fight, women would be pregnant. <laughs> um, I'd like to think I'd win the mud fight. Oh, really? I don't Sounds that... like a slam down to Cox. I don't know if that answers the question, though. No, but it certainly puts an image in our mind. <laughs> so let's talk about the recent documentaries, which I loved. So Thank I've you. seen the polyamory one and I've seen the, the one about death, and the next one is about adoption, yes. I believe. Um, the polyamory one was fascinating. Did, for those who haven't seen it, do you want to explain what... Well, polyamory, also known as ethical non-monogamy, and it's basically w when... Uh, it's, it's not two people in a committed relationship, it's three or four or five, but they're not cheating on each other, they all know about each other. It's about, oh, it's, it used to be called an open relationship, mm -hmm. and it's different from swingers because that's basically just sex parties. And so these are people who have full relationships, they go to the movies, and they're in different arrangements. They call them thruples sometimes, mm. or fourples, and uh, they all know about each other. And did, were you tempted by it? Um, well, you know, I'm a married man, a mm -hmm. heavenly married man. So, so you know, there's clearly, like, I wasn't about to open up my uh, relationship with my wife. But at the same time, you know, I've been with my wife about 13 years, and you, you, there's that part of your brain that's always thinking, what would it be like if we did something like this? I mean, I couldn't do a story without my mind going to that place. Sure. Of, you know, what, what would this be like to experience it? First hand. And did you find yourself imagining who the uh, perfect person would be to have? <laughs> I'm curious. It's what I learned, okay, in the world of polyamory, is that um, it works for some people. Yes. Which is, in a way, the first surprise, because you might think everyone would collapse in, in sort of um, jealousy and recrimination. It does work, but when it works, it's when the women are close friends. Does that make sense? Yes. So, so uh, the women, in a way, are the bedrock for polyamory. It's a good way of putting it. There's going to be a, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of bedrocking. There's a lot of bedrocking <laughs> when it's working. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so I would, uh, what I'd be thinking would be, who is who is my wife? The woman would have to be closer to my wife, and it would be a woman, Russell. In case yeah. you were wondering. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, the woman, uh, although it doesn't have to be. You know, no. other options are available. Sure. Make your own choice. Yeah. Um, the woman would be a, a very cl closer to my wife than she would be to me, I think. That's how it would work. But so it would have to be, I'd have to be thinking about my wife's friends. Yes. And which of them do I find attractive? Yeah. <laughs> that's never, I've never had that. Thing. See, I thought you were going to say a random celebrity, but you've managed to work yourself into an, a more awkward situation. <laughs> because your wife might watch this. I mean, does he mean Linda? Right. <laughs> we do have a friend called Linda. Do you? <laughs> I can't give you names. Well, it's Linda, isn't it? Let's have a <laughs> <laughs> but it made me think about it. The, the thing I found really fascinated, um, there was a guy called Jerry in it, and there was a, an incredibly heartbreaking moment when yeah. he said he would be up for being in a sexual relationship with his wife and his wife's boyfriend. That's right. And the wife went, I can't see that happening. No. And it killed me. Yeah. How did it make you feel? And then he said, Realising that he was not going to get that one by her. Yeah. Well, it would also be all right if I just watched you having sex. Yeah. And then she said, "No, that's not happening either." But how did you feel then? Um. Did you not? You know how I felt a bit bad for him. If I'm yeah. yeah. But did you feel like you wanted to intervene? A bit like you know, like recently, the yeah. David Attenborough's film crew saved those penguins. Yeah, they did. Did you feel like saving Jerry? <laughs> There's a part of me, you know, that of course felt... A but do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I do, yeah, yeah, I absolutely do. It's in the nature of documentaries that, you know, of the kind that I make, that you do want, you know, there's an urge to intervene. 
but you, you can't. You know, part of these docs is giving people the autonomy and the respect to make their choices. Yeah. Well, and that was very evident in the, um, the documentary about yeah. death, which was, I don't know, if it, again, if you saw it, as challenging. And um, I don't know what that must have been like. There's, um, there's a bit at the end where you're with a family who was saying farewell yeah. to their dad. What was that like, to be in such a visceral moment of pain? Yeah, and I should probably clarify that it was people who've elected yeah. to take life-ending medication rather than suffer through stage four cancer. Yeah. And, and so this guy had done that. He'd taken a prescribed cocktail of medication and his family were gathered around him. And it was, it was an extraordinary thing to be p part of. Yeah. Very, very sad, very moving. And yet it was a choice that he'd made. And, and I wasn't one to say that it was the wrong choice. Absolutely. It seemed a, a different way of doing things that in certain ways I felt was quite, quite special, in fact. And does that stay with you? Yeah, it does stay with you. Uh, but... In, in a way, not in a heavy way. For, for me, I'm seeing wonderful, loving people, a family, surrounded around a guy who's made a choice. Yeah. So it, I, don't, I go home and, and, and it might be in my mind, but it's not, it doesn't put me out of sorts. Do you ever keep in touch with anyone that you've made a documentary with? Yeah, I do. No, I mean, in the early days, I used to, I used to almost regard it as a, as a bit of a duty of care, you know, that I went out and, and I thought, well, after I go home, I should stay and check up on these people. And then, you know, 50 hours of TV later, it's not, it's not really realistic. Yeah. But from, from the olden days, I still I made a show about the porn industry and there was a guy called JJ, JJ Michaels. He'd done two weeks in the porn industry as a performer, a male performer when I first met him. And then after that, he, he stayed in a few years. He did about 500 films, right? That's yeah. more than Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Quite impressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, not the, quite the same level no, of no, artistry. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. you try getting wood on set under hot lights. Yeah. Um, he's now working for... <laughs> moving on. Oh, I like that. In my head, I'm just thinking E.T. got bone. But... <laughs> but yeah, so... He got, so he got out of the business. He now work, he works for Boeing. He, told, he emailed me the other day. He actually watched the Polyamory programme and had emailed me. He said, oh, I really enjoyed that. So I had a little catch-up with him. Yeah. He's got 70 people under him. Not like that. <laughs> in the end, I used to torture myself with the idea that, oh, I, you know, I become sort of quite close. It's quite intimate sometimes, the level of, yeah. of access that what you go through with people making these documentaries. And, and so I think afterwards, maybe they expect me to, to keep up. But really, they know what the deal is. You know, mm. you, you go as a journalist, you're filming, you make a programme, and then, and then for the most part, you move on. You drift away. Mm. Now... What do your... Um, you've got children. Mm. How old are your kids? 12, 10 and 4. And what do your kids make? Do they know what you do? I don't really encourage them to watch. In fact, I don't know that they've ever seen one of my programmes all the way through. Yeah. The 12-year-old might be on the verge of being able to watch some of the lighter ones. Yeah. Maybe the wrestling episode, that one. But um, It's going to be extraordinary, though, isn't it? Because he loves you and he's about to love you even more when he finds out that his dad's a legend. <laughs> It's going to confuse them a yeah. lot. Yeah. Because they think I'm a bit of a dobber, actually. A dobber? <laughs> are you a weasel? Why are you, are you ratting on? A plonker. Oh, a plonker. A, a divzoid. So I know a dobber as being so. Oh, not dobbing someone in. Like a grass. A bell end. A bell end. <laughs> I, can't, I can't see that a you're a bell end. A toolbox. A pranit. A pranit. Yeah, I'm afraid so. I don't think you're any of those things. Well, only in a. Da well, I'm not your dad. I don't have to say, Russell, nine o'clock, come on, time for bed. Come on, Russell. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we're describing polyamory. <laughs> um, what's fascinating about you, you have an incredible cross-generational appeal. Like, uh, my mum loves you, um, my sister's kids love you, and there's a thing, I don't know if you know about this, and don't know if you know, but online, called um, Out of Context Louis. Yeah. So basically, people have written down your quotes and they get great enjoyment from it. I thought what we do is we do this to see if you can remember where it comes from. Yes, yes. So here's the first one. I might be annoyingly good at this, I think, but I don't know. I like the fact that you adjusted yourself ready for the quiz. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> right, here we go. Smile, get dressed, cowboy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How could I forget? That was the porn episode of Weird Weekends. OK. And those Polaroids still exist somewhere. That's a scary thought, isn't what, it? What, have you in the buff? There's me and the buff. They, we took three or four of them. I was genuinely naked, and they had to blur it out. 
quite a large blur. <laughs> We've got... Not a boast. We've got another one here. Uh, you like to flirt, don't you? Well, That's yeah. With, um... That was when Louis met the ha Hamiltons. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, yes. I look like I've been mesmerised. <laughs> and you've got former politicians. I didn't know that you were Nick Clegg's fag. Yeah, you might want to explain the term fag. <laughs> oh, if you... It's a public school term. It's... Yeah. Uh, he's, you were kind of like his butler I was slash bitch. Kind of, <laughs> yes. In prison parlance, yeah. I was his punk. Yeah. Um, I was in the young... I was, uh, he was two or three years older and I used to go around waking up the, in the boarding school, waking up the older, the older uh, kids and... Was that your job? Job? Wake him up? Was, uh, yeah, was what I... Is how I fagged. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And so I woke him up. He was a very deep sleeper. <laughs> is that right? I know, it's great knowledge, right? He was a very deep sleeper. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know what else to tell so you, you about that. you had to that. sort of, like, just... You, you used to really had to... You had to really go for it. Yeah, yeah. And, and Because you... if you just did a few and left it, you got in trouble for not what You're like, Throob, why didn't you wake me up this morning? He said, well, I g gave you a few pumps. Yeah. <laughs> and, um... Well, it's all gone a bit carry-on, hasn't it? I love it, though. Um, and th this is the final one. I don't think I can say Biatch. <laughs> yes, that was a Weird Weekends episode about gangster rap, all in the dirty south. Biatch. I can say it now, though. <laughs> Talking about hip-hop, you used to write raps um, from the persona of the Queen. Well, you make it sound like that was a... I made a living doing that. <laughs> I did that once, yes, for a comedy magazine at university. Yes, did you? Did. Yes. Do you remember how it goes? I do, yeah. Would you would uh, like to hear I it? Absolutely... It's quite embarrassing, especially if you take hip hop quite seriously. The idea of doing a comedy rap is almost sacrilegious. You know, you're taking a genre that was what Chuck D called the CNN of the streets, right? Yeah. And you're using it to score cheap points about the royal family mm. and silliness. But if that you want to hear said, it, I will do it. Yeah, yeah, I'd love you to do I, it. I sit bruised from chalices, stone cold in my palaces, uh -huh. but your crib is so cramped you suck a supper from paralysis. Rhymes. I ride them in the castle. You try to diss me and pretty soon your arse will squat in the cell cos I can tell you it's illegal. Treason. That's the reason I'm regal. You'll do, crime, you'll do time for the crime of Les Majesty and fuck the police cos they can't arrest me. There you go. Very good. That's not me swearing, that's the Queen swearing. No, no, no. Lil Louie. Thank you. <laughs> King really... Louis was the rap name. King Louis? What? King Louis, yeah. You're, you're the, the letter of... E, yeah. You're the king of the swingers. Well, in a way. <laughs> you are the jungle VIP. <laughs> um, that was absolutely fantastic. Pleasure. Before you go, I've got, got a little treat for you. I did have... Oh, no, it's here. Oh, right. Now, I read somewhere that you were a fan of uh, things with your face on. Yes. Well, did I actually say that? You did. I've researched you. <laughs> you said that you... I thought I was a fan of the merchandising. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yes. I don't wear things with my no, face No, I'm not on. suggesting that... you are. No. But that you felt bad buying it because it, yeah. it felt cheap and weird. There we go, yes. But if it's given to you, there's nothing wrong with that. For, if, no, that's fair enough. So yeah. what I thought... Um, this is a, uh, a lovely pillow for you. Oh, wow. If you can see it. You... <laughs> can you see, it? see what that says? Yes, sleep tight through the night. <laughs> so there you go. That's a little present for you. Oh, so I love it. So that's for you, your wife, and Linda. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please get up for my wonderful guest, the brilliant Louis Theroux! <laughs>